Hello nerds, thank you for watching Generally Nerdy. This is your week in Nerddom Gaming Edition for the week of August 13th, 2018. This week in gaming, we've got some tabletop gaming to talk about. It's actually a combination of two different kinds of tabletop gaming, so we're gonna talk about that. We're gonna talk about Forza leaks, we're gonna talk about Fallout 76, all kinds of stuff is going on, let's hit up the intro. Quiet on the set, rolling. Hi, I am Bitsy Telek. Hey, I'm Hale Appleman. I'm Walter Kane. I'm Rene Auvergenois, Odo on Deep Space Nine. Michael Dorn, Lieutenant Commander Worf, Star Trek The Next Generation. Uh, come and see me and hear me and talk to me and listen to me talk about myself. Hey man, this is Kevin Smith, often considered generally nerdy, and you are listening to what is often considered generally nerdy. On Generally Nerdy. Yeah. You're listening to... Generally Nerdy. Generally Nerdy. Generally Nerdy. Before we jump into the news, guys, we got to get through the sponsor. This week, just like the last few times we've done sponsors, is sponsored by Mercari and Poshmark. Uh, I'm probably going to keep pushing these until we clear a little bit more of our stuff out. We've been selling stuff, so the, the inventory has changed. But definitely go check out the links in the description. Uh, you're seeing images cycling through on the screen. Some of the things we have up on those uh those sites that they're apps really so Mercari and Poshmark again are our sponsors uh, and I was just informed by my beautiful girlfriend that if you mention the show if you say that you heard about it on Generally Nerdy then you will get an extra discount on top of what we're already really just giving stuff away so go check it out the links again are down in the description and now let's jump into the news First, the biggest hot button thing right now in gaming is Ninja, for multiple reasons. Not only is he the biggest gamer basically in the world, but he also uh, has been catching a lot of heat recently because he recently, uh, about four or five days ago now, uh, came out and said that he will not sh actively stream with female gamers. Uh, his reasoning was because he wanted to protect the sanctity of his relationship with his uh, wife, I believe, and... <laughs> and people have been hating on him for it. Now, if this were a non-social situation, then yeah, I would totally understand it. But if a celebrity chooses to do anything, then they, it, it, the people around them are going to get ridicule as well. Uh, so th him taking this stance is getting him ridicule and his wife ridicule. Uh, but also if he were to do the, the streaming, just like, I mean, I, f I feel like Philip DeFranco said it the best uh, in, in that everyone's family gets grief. Even Philip DeFranco's wife gets a lot of really horrible mail and really horrible uh, everything. People just, like, like when Selena Gomez broke up with freaking Justin Bieber. Selena Gomez, or when she got back with him even. Both of those situations. She got death threats and so on and so forth. And I feel like... This is him keeping his his wife as far away from this as possible, even though coming out and saying this kind of brought her into it anyway. But I feel like this is the lesser of two evils. So I think to achieve the goal in which he wants to achieve, he did the right thing. Uh, I feel like he could have done the other way, gone the other way and just been like, all right, honey, prepare yourself. N you have to trust me going into this. This is my profession. Uh, I love you, so on and so forth. But he didn't choose to go that way. He chose to go the other way. And that's his choice. And if people don't like it, they don't have to watch. But he is the biggest gamer, like I said, in the world. So, uh, you know, I just realized my face is a little dark. Let me go turn on my other light. <laughs> That's a little better. <clears throat> Next is first of two tabletop gaming news updates. We don't usually get a lot of tabletop gaming news, but we've got two this week. And the first has to do with Dune, and it's actually a lot more than just one thing of news. Uh, so 
gaming company Gale Force 9 recently acquired the license to produce Dune games. Uh, first, they're going to do a few board games because that's generally what they do, but they also have, uh, and, and those board games are going to, uh, they're planning to be released with the movie in 2020. But they also have plans to work with uh, Modifius, is a tabletop gaming company, and they're going to make a Dune tabletop game. That's awesome. That's, that's so awesome. I feel like it's bizarre that it took this long for this to happen. Uh, for those of you that don't know, that's like Dungeons & Dragons, only with Dune. If, if you're unfamiliar with what tabletop gaming is. And that's a really rudimentary way to put it, so those of you who are familiar with tabletop gaming, please don't hang me. But, uh, dun it's, it, it's Dungeons & Dragons, Warhammer 40k, something along those lines. Uh, they're also going to be producing a game of miniatures... Uh, that I, I would imagine somehow the tabletop will probably have miniatures as well, but there's going to be a miniatures game as well. So, yeah, that's just a lot of awesome right there. And then our next bit of tabletop gaming is actually a combination of a couple of different kinds of tabletop. Dungeons and Dragons and Magic the Gathering. Now, I, Magic the Gathering isn't technically tabletop. It's a card-based uh, game. It's a trading card game. But uh, they are introducing the world of Magic the Gathering into the world of Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, it's, they're doing the play test right now, so basically the beta test for the new characters. There are four new races that they're introducing with this expansion. Uh, the Loxodon, the Simic Hybrids, Vidalkin and Viashino. I know I'm not pronouncing those right. Uh, they are still very much in development, so if you are part of the playtest, you get to help them develop these race types. So uh, you can go check out all of the information over on the Dungeons & Dragons web website. I would imagine it's up on Magic, as, uh, Magic the Gathering's website as well, but everything, including the link below, which takes you to the full current description, uh, working description of the of the race types, uh, it, all of that is up on Dungeons & Dragons. So go check that out because new Dungeons & Dragons is usually a good thing and when you're combining it with another nerd staple, it's a home run guaranteed. Next is Forza Horizon 4. Now, I'm not usually one to give two craps about the race car games, necessarily. And, and like, the, the precise simulators, like Forza and, uh, uh, I forget what the one on the PlayStation is. I'm sorry. Uh, so, Forza, but, like, the actual racing sims just don't do it for me. Again, simulations, generally speaking, like war sim simulators, I'm not a big fan of. Generally, fighting games and fantasy games and uh, science fiction war type things, which borderlines on war sim, but since it's like Halo is science fiction war sim, but since it's so crazy and there's aliens and stuff, it kind of still is my uh, uh, escape. But... We're talking about Forza Horizon this time because there's been a little bit of a leak that involves Halo. Uh, you're seeing the image on your screen right now and that, the Warthog, and this isn't necessarily a big thing, the Warthog in and of itself, but uh, because it's been in previous Forza Horizon games, that's kind of one of the things that they do. But uh, th this one, there's been rumors that there's going to be an actual Halo racetrack uh, based on the image, again, that you're seeing on the screen right now. Uh, that image has uh, the Covenant vehicle and you can see the ring of the Halo uh, going up in into the distance. So... People have taken that as a, a hint or a leak or a clue, if you will, that there, there's, there's going to be a... And, and I feel like, why not? If, if, if you have the property and you're native and you can use that IP, then go all out, man. That's, that seems like... I mean, I'm, I'm not going to buy the game. Not going to lie. Totally honest. Probably not going to buy the game. But that makes me want to at least play it, like Redbox it for a night or something. So that's pretty cool. 
And also this week, uh, since we're talking about Forza, we got uh, an update, a trailer about the new systems in the game, like the weather and so on and so forth. That link is also in the description, so go check that out. Next on the list and the last bit of gaming news this week is Fallout 76. We got an announcement this week, or a, a, a reveal, I guess, how the perks are going to work for Fallout 76 and how the special is going to be played out because they they alter it slightly uh, for every game because they've had the four this will be the fourth game fallout 3 fallout new vegas fallout 4 and now fallout 76 um and the only one that really made well two of them kind of made sense fallout 3 made sense with its because it was still a, a branching so if you spent enough time doing a thing you got points towards that thing if you used your charisma a lot then you got more charisma points throughout the game uh the one that got it the best was probably new vegas because it was a direct tree you you didn't get stats for abilities you did not use uh, or you got very little stats anyway for abilities you did not use. And then Fallout 4, they just gave you stats and you could decide where they went, whether or not you used that ability. Whether if you used strength all the time, but you didn't try and use your, your luck, let's say, charisma. Let's do that. That's even better. If you, if you never used your charisma points and you always used your strength points, you could use the points earned from strength and unlock charisma perks. And that just, that's not... That's that's awkward. That doesn't pan out well. Uh, that that doesn't that doesn't create enough replay value. It's there's just so much wrong with that. So the reveal for seventy six is similar to Fallout Four, but a I feel like this is a small, very very small step in the right direction. So the way it works is you get uh, when whenever you level up every two levels, I believe, into up and up through level ten you get a point for one of your special attributes. And you also, throughout the game, pick up perk cards. So cards cost points in order to equip them. So let's say, again, we're gonna go back to strength. Let's say you, you, you have three points of strength and you have five perk cards, you can only enable as many as three points will buy. So if you have a one point perk card and a two point perk card, then you can only use those two perks. Um, and, and you hold on to your cards even if you're not using them because then you can trade them with people who join you on quests and so on and so forth. So I, that's, that's an interesting way to do it. I still feel like there's going to be a ton. And so far there actually has been quite a bit of fan backlash because <sighs> that it, yeah, it, it, it's just like just just a little too far off. Just a little too not enough RPG and a little too uh, casual gamer friendly. Anyway, the other bit of news that we got uh, within the last week has been how 76 is going to deal with griefers. So anyone who participates in PvP against somebody who does not willingly participate in PvP. So uh, let me break this down again for the non-RPG uh, gamers. Basically, a griefer is somebody who tries to pick a fight with other actual players who don't want to fight. There are people who want to do the player versus player stuff and there are people who just want to go through all the NPC stuff. So, uh, anyone who pick, there is a way to initiate PVP uh, that is a, it deals minor damage to whoever is the initiated and not the initiator. And if the initiated chooses not to accept, then effectively they should just split and the the instigator should go try and instigate or initiate with somebody else. However, because it does do that little bit of damage to initiate, if somebody initiates enough or if they just take a rocket launcher and blow somebody up without initiating, then they become marked as a murderer and they lose like so much playability and they become fair game. So you become a wanted person. So anyone who kills you gets a boatload of caps, uh, which is the in-game currency for those of you who have not played Fallout. And that's, yeah, I feel like that's brilliant. That is absolutely brilliant. There is, it's, 
it still allows jerks to be jerks and it still allows uh, uh, people who just want to go poke, uh, pick fights and poke the bear. Uh, it lets them do that, but it gives them incredible amounts of incentive to not do that. And if they do succeed at that, then they are severely punished. It's pretty great. And that, guys, is the end of video games this week. Thank you very much for watching all the way to the end. What did I miss? What should we talk about next week? Let me know in the comments down low. If, though, you want to go deeper into the conversation, jump over to the website, generallynerdy.net. That is the place to get all of the things and the stuff. Anything to do with Generally Nerdy, you can find it there on the website, generallynerdy.net. Social media, stores, all of that stuff is up on generallynerdy.net. Or, if you want to support the channel a little more directly, then jump over to the Patreon, patreon.com slash generallynerdy. That is the place to go to support the channel. There are four tiers. The lowest tier is just a dollar. And really, you get almost twice the content for just that dollar. So go check it out. Patreon.com slash generallynerdy. All of the links, as always, are also down in the description. So if you can't understand what I'm saying because I speak too fast, then just click the link in the description. If you are brand new to this channel, please subscribe. Click that subscribe button. If you like this episode, click the like button. If you are falling behind on your nerd news and you want to catch up, then click or tap that box right there to the left of my face to do that. But before we go, guys, before we do any of the things, always, always remember that if it's generally nerdy, it's probably here.